Hey, this is Josh Wink, and you're listening to Evo and RST. Good morning and greetings to you, Mr. Josh Wink. How are you, and whereabouts in the world are you? I am groggy right now, but uh, being it's early in Ibiza, it's not, not always the... Uh, the easiest remedy is getting up early in the morning, Zed, is if you already stay up all night. <laughs> Very true indeed. So was it a late one for you last night? Uh, unfortunately, it always seems to be a late one for me here on the island. Uh, as much as I just want to stay put and enjoy my surroundings, uh, my lady and I got a, like a, a, fil- a finca villa for six and a half weeks during the summer. So I tend to base myself here. And as much as we like to sit out and drink our uh, rosé wine and watch the stars, uh, Someone ends up calling up and saying, hey, you should come out to this gig, uh, I'm playing it, so-and-so. So I actually end up uh, having more later nights than uh, than I should. Some would say it isn't a bad life, but no rest for the wicked, as they say, eh, Josh? Yeah, I know, this is what I do, so it's no problem. All good indeed, Josh. Now, before we start speaking about everything that's going on in your world at the moment, can you just explain to us how your love affair with electronic music started? Uh... Well, I guess it just started through DJing and just wanting to be a DJ when I was a teenager. Uh, let's see, from there on about, I was very influenced by kind of the synth pop sound that was coming from uh, the UK in the mid to early 80s uh, from the sounds of everything that Daniel Miller was doing from Human League to. Section 25 to Cabaret Voltaire, all that kind of stuff, and then it progressed into uh, craft work, and then Chicago house music, and really how it was, uh, acid house music that came out of Chicago in the, the mid to late 80s is one of the reasons why I started making music, and uh, I started DJing and playing these kinds of sounds, and then I was uh, curious about making music that was in my head from playing other people's music. That's when I started making music in uh, 88, 89. Cool, and thanks for that insight. Now, Josh, on from there, you went on to pioneer many big house tracks, including Higher State of Consciousness. What was the uh, inspiration behind that big joint? I don't know. It was just kind of a mistake. Uh, I was always a little bit influenced by all different kinds of music growing up in Philadelphia. I was just uh, in just kind of presented with a whole barrage of different styles of music from funk to hip hop to uh, you know dance music to rock soul and it just kind of shows in a little bit of my uh, eclecticity I, I guess you maybe call it my eclectic nature in terms of me as a DJ and then also as a producer as well I was very into the hardcore sound of you know, the hardcore UK sound in the early 90s of, uh, I guess, what you guys called hardcore was the beginning of drum and bass. Um, and I was very much into that sound uh, along with Acid House. So I guess the combination of the two kind of gave the influence for higher states of consciousness. But uh, everything else that came about was just an inspiration of who I am and what kind of music I've been subjected to now growing up. Great. Well, I'm glad as a nation we had some kind of influence on you. Now, you went on to set up Ovum Records, I believe, uh, coming up to 15 years. Do tell us more. Well, we're, we're very fortunate with Ovum to be celebrating our 15 years of being a record label, which is a pretty neat feat uh, in today's day and age. Um, so we're, we're very happy about that. And our catalog and our artists uh, that we have in the later just keep on, on, on growing. And uh, we're very fortunate and happy to still be around. I haven't personally released anything new for around a year. Uh, I, last year, 2009, I released uh, when a banana was just a banana on Ovum. And then this year we released a remix album, which contained lots of uh, unbelievable remixes from uh, my contemporaries and who I respect and look up to, like Martin Boothridge or uh, Radio Slave, DJ Sneak, and Gipster, and D Jules. And, um, Benny Rodriguez, that we had a whole bunch of different uh, remixes that we're very happy with. So we put that out at the beginning of this year, and now we're just basically uh, doing lots of parties over the summer to support the 15 years of Ovum being a label and supporting eclectic electronic music. Um, we just came off of a, a couple of really nice releases, The Jewels and uh, Harry Romero with the Yours Vaughn remix, and we're very excited to uh, be 
putting out uh, the first album from Shlomi Alba, an Israeli artist, uh, in October, November on the label. But uh, really right now we're focusing on uh, celebrating and getting the word out there from Open Recordings being 15 years old. That certainly is a feat and many congratulations indeed. Now while I've got you in studio mode, Josh, um, would you like to reveal what your essential plugin is? Kind of rusty in the studio. It's been so long. You know, an interesting thing about being a DJ and a producer is that, you know, as a DJ, you're always on the road and you're always working. And it's very hard to make the time to balance um, traveling to being creative in the studio. And uh, there's a combination of things. I, I solely don't use all, like, uh, plugins. I'm not all a software guy. I'm both using hardware and software. I wouldn't necessarily say there's... There's one uh, thing that is my secret weapon. I kind of use a, a little bit of everything. My, my motto in terms of making music is it's not really what you have or how much of it, it's how you use it. So um, I tend to base myself a lot on simple things. It doesn't necessarily have to be the newest and the biggest and the, and the latest uh, plug-in or hardware. Um, I kind of balance my studio out with a mixture of old school hardware, um, gear and trying to keep up with all the new stuff that's coming out right now but it's very difficult to keep on top of things as things are ever changing okay so i take it josh you're not going to reveal that secret weapon that defines your actual productions then <laughs> unfortunately not i mean i have no problem with telling people what i use i often do interviews in tech magazines and you know uh answer people's questions about what i what i use to make music and to DJ with because it's not really it's it's different if you give a paintbrush to Picasso you can get a Picasso but if you give a paintbrush to uh, you know a Gauguin you will get a Gauguin so uh, you know the the artistry is in the, the beholder so it's not like uh, someone tells me oh you gotta get this piece of gear because with this you can make this um, I really truly believe that everybody has these tools in their hands right now and it's it's quite unique in terms of how everybody does their own interpretation of, uh, you know, music and or using certain paintbrushes to paint the picture of their, their musical sound. So, uh, don't really have, I mean, I've been, my, I guess my kind of secret weapon is what everybody has. I, I use a, a DAW, a digital auto workstation of Ableton Live, and it's really secret. Everybody uses it, and it's an unbelievable piece of, uh, gear, you know, for the computer that uh, enables me to just work quickly on the fly and make mistakes into uh, pieces of production that people question, how did I do that? So that's really the best way I can answer your question. Answer very aptly indeed, Josh. Now, it's been uh, great speaking to you again, and we look forward to seeing you back in London soon. Thanks, my man. I'll see you guys in uh, sunny London. www.evoandrst.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.